Hi, my name is Charlie, and welcome to Explore. To explore is to dream, to grow, to learn, to experience. Come explore. Join me. Explore went to China on a three-week fact-finding mission of philanthropy. My name is Charlie, and I'm a trustee of the Annenberg Foundation. I've been blessed with the opportunity to meet with some of the most innovative minds and leading nonprofit organizations in China. Join me as we explore the environment, human rights, public health, social change, philosophy, and education. much energy in like Shanghai, Beijing. It's pretty exciting times here. Right. You must feel like you're in the right place at the right time in your life. Right. Part of a dramatic change of China and the world. I think China is in the frontier. No, you can feel the change in the air. I, you know, I think you're in a great position to become a new leader in this country. Do you ever think that way? Is it something you'd like to do? Uh, there's so many changes that, is, that people like me want to make in China. Uh, we still have a lot of uh, problem and uh, you know if we can make uh, political changes and changes you know, in our society I think the livelihood of people much better. If you want to see the future of China Come to a village school in rural Anwen, where every child is learning English. The sign behind me reads, giving birth to a male child or female child is equally as good. I'm about to enter a Chinese classroom where I'm gonna teach some English. Kids are so intimidating, I don't care where you are in the world. They're always smarter than you and they can see right through you. We'll call me Professor Charlie. Uh, Professor Charlie. Professor Charlie. Professor Charlie. Professor Charlie. Professor Charlie. All right, let's get down to business. We're gonna play a game. I'm gonna ask you a question and then you'll ask me a question. What town are we in? An Wu Town. Does anyone have a question for me? Where are you from? I'm from California. I live in a city called Los Angeles. I have some questions for you. What do you want to be when you grow up? Entrepreneur. What do you want to be when you grow up? The artist. Right here. Adventurer. I want to get my master's degree. Okay. Good. A teacher. Who wants to read box number two? Cloud. Let Professor Charlie tell me to cloud. 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 And who would like to read box number four? This is the wind. The wind is blow in the tree. Excellent. Let's go to page 25. This is snow. Snow is cold and white. 
I've met with students in schools in the United States. But these children from a poor farming community learning how to speak English fluently and already knowing what they want to be when they grow up might be better prepared to meet the challenges of a new global economy. Leaves and wind. Leaves and wind. You're my new friend. You're my new friend. <laughs> <laughs> Do your parents think the environment is a problem? Yes or no? No. No. Yes. Yes. No. No. Yes. No. Yes. 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 No. No. Yes. Yes. No. Yes. 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 I'm Charlie, this is Dusan. <laughs> we're at the Wolong Panda Preserve, China's national treasure, the panda, and we're gonna learn all about them. Actually, in captivity, we have 188. And the wild, we have 1,590. Because our center did very successful breeding, Reproduction for pandas. We are start reintroduction for captivity panda. Our population increased from 10 in 1990, and up to now we have 102. So the panda is very hard to be pregnant. Only about 30% of the panda we breed can have baby. Even the panda give baby, give birth to twins especially. They will give up one of the babies. The one she gave up, it's very, very easy to be died. Fortunately, our center have overcome this problems. We have 16 babies last year from 11 mother. It's a very, very successful year for us. Holding a panda or just seeing one says more about the environmental movement than anyone who can talk about it because it's an indescribable feeling. about the love. The environment goes, the water goes, the animals go. It's all connected. In 223 BC, Emperor Qin, who was only 23 years old, conquered the six other dynasties at the time and unified them into what is today known as China. He then began building a wall that was expanded over the next 1,800 years, the Great Wall of China. It runs 4,000 miles through the mountains, marking the border along China's western frontier. But in the 1600s, the Manchu army bribed soldiers guarding the wall, and they poured into China. When Emperor Qin, the first emperor in China, he was in throne actually for only 15 years, but he spent 10 years building the Great Wall. And according to the historical records, one fifth of the whole population in China at that time were involved in the construction of the Great Wall. I'm very proud of being a Chinese people because first, in a historically speaking, we have so long a history of uh, civilization. We always say we have 5,000 civilization. So that's the longest civilization among all the countries in the world. Since 1949, I should say, because our new China was founded by our chairman in 1949, 
and from then on, China is now is walking up. And from the year 1979 on, things are going better. We carried out our open and reform policy from 1979. That's that uh, Deng Xiaoping, you know the Deng Xiaoping, the, the little guy who was very famous. Because he stayed in France when he was young, he said, China should not close its door to the outside world, or otherwise China will, would have no way out. He means that it's difficult for China to develop itself without the uh, help from the outside world. Emperor Qin is also known for having built one of the other great historical sites in China, his own tomb, with its immense army of clay terracotta warriors and horses. Using a workforce of over 700,000 Chinese people, Emperor Qin built a terracotta army of over 8,000 soldiers. Each soldier you're looking at was an actual soldier from his military. They're all unique, they all have their own unique characteristics, and the point was, in his afterlife, his army would be here to protect him. I spent some time with China's leading archaeologist. Uh, Tongwa 呃，做皇帝期间，为了修宫殿、修陵墓、修长城，呃，为了满足他个人的私欲呢，超级限的使用了民力，呃，导致国家呢很快的就灭亡掉了。呃，所以呢，很多人呢，就是说秦始皇
some of Birmingham, they came by prostration all the way from Qinghai to Lhasa. It takes about two and a half years to get back their home. But that's why that we have to do hard. You have to have pure mind, a solid heart. And then you will get a more result to get a good karma for next life. Also that we are going to pray for all of human beings. So they're coming by foot, walking. Yeah, all the way from their homeland. They came from Qinghai province, which is about 1,200 kilometers. He is 83 years old. <laughs> this is his first time to visit the Putala Palace. This is monk debating. This is where they practice all their philosophy. Tibetan monks come to debate. This is where they practice scripture. One monk sits, the other monk stands. One monk gives an edict of philosophy. The monk sitting down responds. Can you share with me what compassion means to you? Ne, that's the man who says, "Go, man, go, go, so, so, go." It's a new job. ปูนายิงเนี่ยยิงเซมเจดเซมเจจามะจงเนี่ยตู้จีนเนี่ยสู้สู้สัมโนติเกยิงจิกุปตองดามิชูรังเกสัมโนสู้สู้จิกเกก
Sanjay Gombo Top said the Chitan China Chu Yakos Lobjo J. Sanjay Gombo Dolo Dota Langa Kasikasi Yome Chatan Chinese in a cover for the Yabuja Yore. Thank you. Yeah, Tashi Dili. Thank you. I'm in line in here about to pay homage to the oldest Buddha in the world. And the monk in front of me, his cell phone goes off. His cell phone goes off. And he picks it up. And as he's praying to the oldest Buddha in the world, he's having a conversation. And I just thought that was surreal. He's in the full garb. And I want to tap the monk and say, hey, can you be quiet for a moment? And he's just rapping on the phone. And I just think it's so bizarre. Everywhere I go, I see monks and the side tribe text messaging. And it's going to be really interesting because there's so many incredible things with technology, yet there's balance to it. There's a lot of things that are going to take away from culture, too. I'm in Tibet right now in an internet cafe, about to check a few emails. I think I'm going to come into a little place and be all by myself. Just look around you. I got half of Tibet right now talking to people all over the world about all types of topics. It's crazy. I can't even get on a machine. Hi there. Yeah, he wants to talk to you. Is he talking English? Yeah. Oh, nice. Hey. Buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you? I mean, you, you must be pretty right far away. There. You guys met long distance on the internet. Wow. Do you think that the internet is changing China? People from all over the planet can talk to each other and learn about each other and share ideas and information and question a lot of authority. I see many kids, many students from rural area when they come to when they come to the city to study, and they often become a member of uh, environmental groups. They have personal experience with uh, uh, environment degradation in their home village, in their in their hometowns. They know that you know if we do not protect the environment, uh, they will facing the consequences. I've been in China for two weeks, and some of the things I hear a lot about population, the water, the air. Are these your concerns, or are they different? Water. Water, water and population. I think yeah, water and population. In China, I think water uh, problem is uh, the most serious uh, environment problem. Um, it's immediate to affect people's life, and also the water scarcity and uh, uh, water pollution uh, has a huge uh, impact uh, not only on human health, but also on the economic development in China. I think that uh, the water has become a bottleneck for uh, China's you know, uh, current rapid economic growth. Population. Water and the population. Cars. People are very interested in buying uh, new cars. The gas has increased dramatically during the past few months. That people are still hoping to get a car. That's kind of a sign of a, a better life. The government promoting car consumption in China as uh, people start to buy cars, then there's be a driving force for economy. Imagine the urban, uh, the urban city in China all have this aspiration of owning a car. It's along with the 
tremendous risk for China's environment, our global environment. Population. Population. I think this uh, responsibility. 呃，原先呢，我们讲啊，我们不走这个先污染后治理的老路，因为这是资本呃市场经济国家走过的路，先污染了，然后再去治，我们不走这条路。但是现在看来，我们正在走这条路。<笑> the young people here are afraid of the future. I think what they are, they the uncertainty that they have before, uh, we were socialist country, uh, that we. Enjoy the good part of socialism. You know, you have your future secured. You know, you don't worry about you know when you're getting old, when you're getting retired. You know, you have pension, and the education is free, and medical care is almost free. So you don't have a big burden, and everybody would have a job. So they um they can become more idealistic. Young people in the 80s they fight for democracy. They want to promote social uh, changes and you know try to uh, achieve you know, um, social justice. But people today, they are uncertain. I mean, young people, they are uncertain of it. They are worried about their job. They, you don't know whether they, <laughs> there are many people who will be jobless immediately after their graduation. It seems that money is the solution. So it seems that only when you earn more money, you can solve many of these problems. So everybody is have to work hard to get more money, especially current you know, housing reform make everybody in debt. Right? You have to borrow money for the next 20 years in order to, to, to buy an apartment. And uh, then you have to pay back the loan. You have to worry about these immediate needs. So you don't need to worry about the overthrow the government. Air quality has been uh, worsened over the years. And uh, it's very serious. And a lot of people, especially people in Beijing, have a serious uh, health problem. Most people are affected. Uh, their land, uh, lands are affected by the bad air. We are naturalists at heart. You know, we are environmentalists. We care about nature. But the way to fight environmental problems in China is not to go out there, you know, hug a tree. You know, the solution is to fight bad government policies. It's not just an environment problem. It's only reflected on ecology, on the environment. With all this growth, it's a big challenge for the environment, don't you think? Definitely. You know, have been engaged in economic activity and the need to utilize natural resources, human resources to engage such a um, rapid growing economy and all these have uh, you know, interaction with the environment and in many cases are, are pretty destructive to the environment. Um, you know, the, the overconsumption and uh, you know, change of the landscape and uh, relocation of people and communities. Mo 在中国的社会 I've talked to many environmentalists on this trip, and I seem to get a common theme that China needs to progress, but at what point is this going to become a problem? The 对在长江最发达的地区所造成的水环境的污染可能是最严重的。你比如说，现在每年长江排入长江的就是这种污水污染的水是两百八十亿吨，就这个数量。280 
，你在这儿的话看到，你在长江上游，在四川你还能看到几条清澈的河流，但一旦你走向长江的下游、中下游地区，你几乎看不到一条清澈的河流。长江呢是亚洲的最长一条河流，在这个一百八十万平方公里里面，生活了四亿人口，而且中国的话还有一个工程，就是因为中国北方比较缺水，还准备把长江的水拿一部分到北方去，这样的话，长江算起来它大概要养活七亿人口。One of the things that makes the Three Gorges Dam project so controversial is that over a million people have been removed. We're in the historic town of Fengdu, or what I should say is left of it. For the rubble you see was once a city, but it's now all been torn down. These towns scatter the Yangtze River. Old towns being replaced with new ones. But talking to people, what I've learned is that New people, the younger people, are actually not so against the Three Gorges project. They're looking forward to living in modern cities. It's the old people who are losing their way in their culture that are concerned. We're now entering lock one of the Three Gorges Dam. Three Gorges Dam is a modern-day version of the Great Wall of China. Built with over 40,000 employees, it is the largest project since the Great Wall of China. And to many, this Three Gorges Dam is a symbol of China's re-emergence as a world power. What can you say, but I'm in awe? What a technological marvel. We're in Shenlong Stream, a tributary to the Yangtze. An interesting point that the captain told me was that before the Three Gorges Dam, all of this beauty was inaccessible. But because of the dam, this water rose from one meter to 40 meters, allowing people to come up here and enjoy all this beauty. These are some of the gentlemen who've been moved from their old rural farms to the new cities that you've seen. Hopefully, when we take a pause, we'll be able to ask them about how they feel about the move. How do you feel about the move from the old place to the new homes? This are there any drawbacks to the move? Sturgeon here, 140 million year old species, almost went extinct. To the Chinese, what the panda is to the woods, they are to the sea, so they're very sacred. One of the drawbacks of the Three Gorges Dam project has been just the environmental protection of animals. The migratory path of the sturgeon's been cut off. 
the sturgeon can no longer come in from the ocean and go up the Yangtze to reproduce. So the Chinese government is trying to artificially inseminate the sturgeon and bring back the population. The sturgeon is genetically modified. This is not natural reproduction. So how this will affect it, we don't know. How the react out at sea is another big issue. The results are still to be determined. Is the government doing a good job in handling the environmental situation? Yes or no? Good, but not enough. Yes. Not good. I think we should not answer the question so simple. Uh, our country is a developing country. Uh, uh, our economic, econ economic is, uh, is developing. We must, uh, at one hand, develop our economic. On the other hand, we should uh, solve the environmental problem. Um, so there are many problems now, but our uh, government is trying their best to, do, um, to solve the problem. I was shocked to learn that women in the countryside of China had one of the highest suicide rates in the world. Wu Qing founded the Center for Rural Migrant Workers to help women develop their voice and realize they have rights. She's an inspiration to women not only in China, but also throughout the world. So I went through all the political movements, including Cultural Revolution, together with my people. And that's why I'm working so hard to change the system. I want China to be rule of law and by law, not rule of man by man, which, which in a way has lasted for over 2,400 years. But I think we are laying the ground for democracy and freedom and the political participation at grassroots. It's bottom up. So we are doing all kinds of projects. Women's rights are human rights. So I started to pay more and more attention to the rights of women. Men's places in the outside world, women's places at home is still prevailing in China, even now. I mean, this is universal, right? But then I think it is stronger in China, especially for rural women. These are not cover girls. They are role models. Role models mm. to women. So this is very important. So through this magazine, in a way, as a vehicle, we start to know the needs and demands of women. Because at that time, our reporters often went to outweigh places, especially minority areas, just to find out their needs. They told us they wanted to learn how to read and write. So we started our first literacy projects in 1996. <laughs> The most important thing is empowerment. We tell them, you are a human being before you are a girl or a woman. So on that basis, men and women are equal. But I have to work very hard, try hard. And sometimes we have to pay twice the price of a man's, because this is a man's world. If you watch television, see who are there, men. They are deciding our future. Is that fair? No, that's not fair. Yes. We want to train women with love, social responsibility, with a kind of desire for knowledge, with multi-skills, and to be a global citizen. <laughs> With modern technology and IT, everything that happens in one corner of the world will be known immediately, sometimes within a few seconds. I'm not for a separate project for women. I think it's important for men and women to come together so the men will know what women can contribute. Right? I think this is important. And this is what we are doing. Because if men and women can work together, this world is going to be better.
没有错。中国人本身他就是个非常注重环境、人跟外在的一种互存关系。中国人他古代一直是把这个延续的非常好。自身丢了他自己的美好环境，但是现在中国人已经醒悟了，已经重新在面对自己，重新在整理我们古代留下来美好的东西。Tell me a little bit about calligraphy. 人的所有的困惑和烦恼，它来源于人太复杂了，事情弄复杂了，所以就失去它的快乐和意义。所以写字也是让我们回到简单。纯真的气是我们体内里面本来有的最简单的真气。写书法不是在表象外在的东西，最终是修炼我们内心的东西。书法是中国人在作为修身养性的一个最好的方法。写字需要就平心静气，心要静下来。所以中国人用这个柔软的毛笔来书写文字，最强大的力量，它是柔软的。所以，让我们在写的过程当中，一定要体会和感受到这种柔软的力度在哪里把明白的万法为心法，眼前万法为心法。眼前就是我们所所人看到的一切的东西，一切的事物，都是我们的心产生而感受、分别出来的。一切的东西，它的美、丑、善、恶，种种东西，都是我们的心产生以后分别出来。明白这个心的根本以后，一切东西就明白了。喜欢吗 ？You like it? Yes. 是的。我把这个送给你。Oh. I present to you. Thank you. Thank you. 谢谢。Shanghai. I'm in the Boon District, which is called the Old District of Shanghai. It's hard to believe that behind me is the New District. Only 15 years ago, those were rice paddies, agricultural land. Everything was flat. Now it's the new epicenter of the East, the twin sister of Manhattan. <laughs> 几十年了，马上这个房子要拆了，马上这个房子就要拆了，要装大了。
，你有钱你没大没大的没市区，没有钱没郊区，这样子，我什么地方不知道了？他不知道啊。嗯，就你们老早没有这个心理好啊，现在他要，和你们家什么，他，年轻人不要这个老的一套了。哦，这个日子比老早过得好了，小青年是日子好了，生活两样了，生活方式两样了。平衡中国的经济发展和生活和人民的生活问题，这就是通过，嗯，中国的教育，用教育去改变人们的意识，让人们充分意识到环境保护的重要性，这就是我对中国政府所提出的希望吧。With all this growth, it's a big challenge for the environment, don't you think? Definitely. I think China as a nation has to find creative ways and alternative paths for achieving um, economic development. Does it feel like you're in the right place at the right time in your life? Uh, there's so many changes that, is, that people like me want to make in China. And we still have a lot of uh, problems, and uh, you know, if we can make um, Political changes and changes in our society, I think the livelihood of people much better. I think Chinese people, they, they welcome this challenge. They are courageous and want to face this challenge and try to find solution. I think China is kind of being forced into thinking differently right. and that can be very productive in the long run. Definitely. I guess you have to when you have a population of 1.4 billion. Maybe we have to explore. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we have to explore to find a solution. <laughs>